A second collection for the annual Catholic Appeal will immediately follow our regular collection. The parish office is looking for a part-time receptionist office assistant. The hours are Tuesday and fr through Friday, 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. The applicant must be able to speak, read, and write in English and Spanish. Please stop by the parish office for the further details and for an application Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. and 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. No phone calls, please. The Stations of the Cross prayer will be available at our parish website and on YouTube for everyone to follow in, in the comfort of their own home. 8 a.m. daily mass will continue to be in the church. Lenten Parish Mission, Tuesday, March the 9th to Thursday, March the 11th, following the 8 a.m. mass. This Lent, join our St. Francis family as we pray a weekly Zoom rosary and Divine Mercy chaplet on Zoom from the comfort of your own home or wh wherever you might be. We will meet every Sunday promptly at 8 p.m. on Zoom. You will need smartphone, a smartphone, tablet, or a computer with a Zoom app installed. Our first Sunday virtual rosary was on Sunday, February the 21st. For more information, please check the parish website or Facebook page. Beginning March the 2nd, we will have walk-in confessions at the parish office. Confession hours will be Tuesday through Friday from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. The hours for confession on Saturday remain the same from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. Your health and safety are our priority. Please wear your face coverings at all times and practice social, social distancing while on church premises. Due to the situation we are undergoing, we ask you please do not move the chairs. Please keep them on their place to guarantee a healthy distance. It is our moral and spiritual duty to protect and look after one another during this very difficult time. Please stand for the prayer of St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. If you would like to join us in singing along, you can find the worship aid by clicking on the little uh, site on the back of the chair in front of you. Please join in our gathering song, Save Your People. Come home. We 
Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning. Welcome to our sanctuary. It has been a lot of work being put into this beautiful ground. Thanks to our brothers and sisters and their collaboration. Yesterday we were pushing it to have it ready by 4.30. We finished at 3.35, and that was a pretty good time to get it ready for us to gather here and come together in prayer. Let's pray that God may bring us up, raise us up in this second Sunday of Lent as we journey to our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection, the ways of the cross. This is a time of repentance, deep awareness of who we are, where we stand, and what are we being called for. So let us pray the Lord may give us his grace to lead us into the fullness of his promises. Let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to my God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord our God. Amen. And my mighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and take us to everlasting life. Amen. commanded us to listen to your beloved son. Be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight may appear, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through your, our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged 
on the wood. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked out, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies. And in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did
did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart from themselves. And he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them, along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. And from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matters to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. The disciples had a tr had trouble understanding. And I think that's something as part of human nature to truly get the full understanding of where we stand and what is God calling us to be. Before today's gospel selection, the Lord has walked with his disciples. He has called them. The disciples have been witness of signs, miracles. Signs that determine and tell us the presence of God in our midst, working through. The disciples have been hearing Jesus preaching the good news. Parables, words, 
connections with the prophets and the Old Testament to help this new community that represents the new rising church to come into understanding what's ahead of them. In today's gospel selection, we have three main disciples, three important churches. We have Peter. The community of Peter they re represents Rome in the Western world. We have James, the head of the church of Jerusalem. The church of the East. And then we have James, the head of the church of Asia. Just like uh, three wise men that represent the whole world who have experienced the epiphany, God's revelation within themselves and being sent as witness of God's presence in our midst. So we have these three disciples in which Jesus have already announced that as he gets to Jerusalem, he will go through trial, suffering, death on the cross, and then resurrection. And we know that for a Jew, the cross is a shameful death. Even the book of the law says that whoever is placed on the cross is cursed by God. So you can imagine just the law of the Lord placing that shameful and curseful way of dying on a cross and God will hang on that cross himself. That's why the disciples were thrown off. After Peter has reaffirmed that as everybody has different perspectives of who Jesus is, the prophets, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, and this guy with this impulsive behavior comes and says to reaffirm the community in the new church that Jesus in their midst it's the incarnated God, the Son of God. And Jesus praised him and said, As this truth does not come just out, out of the blue. God has given you this truth and placed it in your hearts. And then he reaffirms, well, if I'm the son of God, the incarnated God in this world, then I want to tell you what's ahead of me. And we have Peter, after hearing that Jesus will go through the ways of the cross, dying, and then would rise on the third day, Peter is overwhelmed by that truth because he, in any way, in the rest of the community, would have in their heads that the Messiah, the promised man who, was, who would free the nation from the hands of the Romans will have to die on the hands of the Romans. And then he says, Jesus replied, stay away from me, Satan, because you do not think as God, but you think as men do. And that's a dilemma that we're facing right here. Jesus wants to show his disciples that there's no glory if we do not go to the ways of the cross. And think about it. We live in a society of always seeking the shortcuts, thinking that by giving some extra money, we can get behind the back door or get the best seat, or if you have any influences, you can cut short the line and be able to enter first or get a VIP area instead of the business class or regular. We live in a society that teaches comfort, shortcuts, 
inconvenience. That's why we are a society who's always grounded on convenience and entitlement. We feel entitled to everything if we have a good social status and a good economic security. And at the end, as we open the scriptures today, we hear on the first reading on the Genesis, a man, a man who heard God's promise, trust that God will fulfill his promise, and God did, because he bore a son who would be his heir and carry on the family name and carry on that family strength and honor. And after this Abraham, and we have to put Abraham before the temple, before the U.S. nation was established, it was just Abraham. After Noah and the flood, many years passed for Abraham to be called to what was he was being called for. Many years. It seemed like God, after the flood, decided to kind of step back and rethink things about his creation. And then Abraham comes along. He sees the heart of this man, feels the faith and confidence that he has, the assurance that everything has on what he stands for. On Abraham, as a letter to the Hebrews describes him, it's not a man that bends very easy. It's not a man that puts his integrity in jeopardy. He's a man that knows where he stands and knows what's better. And as we know that journey of Abraham, is a man that does not engage on anything that would damage his integrity. Later on, we will learn when he faces the situation in Egypt, he will say that Sarah is his sister. And for his shame, he's going to pay for that price, for that lie. But what's important here is the promise has been fulfilled. Isaac is there. But as always, the Lord wants to see how trustworthy is Abraham. How trustworthy is this man to be able to entrust, to entrust him with a bigger, greater deal? A great mission. He wants to see how he truly has faith in him. And God has all right to taste Abraham because from the beginning of the world with Adam and Eve, after Noah, humanity is not trustworthy. We fail all the time. And we hear from the end of the flood a very powerful, strong affirmation for God. It says, I have come to know that men are evil. That's pretty tough to hear from God. I have come to learn that men are evil and they're ready for death. The amazing thing that even with that knowledge of God, God is still putting all his stake on humanity and his creation. Truly, we see Abraham being called to sacrifice his son. It's a very nice story, story. very tender. But picture yourself hearing God's voice and telling you, I want your older son to be sacrificed for me. 
and I'll tell you where you're going to kill him and offer it to me. See if your hearts were inclined to kill your son in behalf of God. Pay attention to the reading. <clears throat> Abraham in any way went to see a priest, a psychologist, his brother-in-law, his sister, whoever, to ask for counsel and be able to discern if he was okay to kill his son, or it seems that he didn't even speak to Sarah. He didn't question God. How many of us, for anything, anything, especially in this church, we don't move one finger and we don't have the whole explanation. If it's thorough, explain. If we have the whole policy, the whole plan laid out. Well, that tells us that we're not people of faith. I even see in this church as your pastor almost six years serving you and reaffirm you that I can hold this office. And I still hear people doubting and questioning what I do and <clears throat> being against on whatever I do because they just believe something else. Well, as we go and journey on this land, the thing is, the dilemma here is, how can you get to the glory of resurrection and the fulfillment of God's promises if you do not want to go to the way of the cross? If you want the easy trick away, then you're not going to make it. And that's why every year you're in this cycle of the same thing, the same thing, your life doesn't change, the same sin has hunting you, your same bad habits are there because you just don't want to make an effort. You want a magical one to just change you like in Disneyland, Mickey Mouse, Tweaky Winkly, magic trick, and then you're renewed. And I don't think that's the way spiritual life works. Spiritual life works with a lot of work, discipline, sacrifice, self-giving, detachment, freedom, and overall, overall faith in God. And we hear it on the second reading. If God is for us, who could be against us? Very beautiful statement. But what does truly mean and what requires to truly embrace that truth that if God is with us, what could be against us, which means God requires of each one of us full faith, full self-giving and surrendering to God's plans. Just like Abraham. No questions asked. Whatever you ask of me, I will do it. Even if this requires a high price to pay. Where do you stand on that? Because I get a feeling that we're not willing to pay the high price that requires to fulfill God's will in us. Because we're always questioning, pushing comfort, pushing the most convenient way to go forward in life and gain what we want. And in getting our own way at the lowest effort possible. And if it's a freebie, wow, even better. Well, I think that on this second Sunday of Lent, we got to start moving our hearts. We got to start moving our consciousness because we heard from Peter last Sunday on the second reading, baptism, it's an appeal to God for full consciousness, full awareness. And the gospel last Sunday told us that as Jesus was drawn into the waters and rose <clears throat> out in the waters, became a new creation 
with a new awareness. And that's why he goes to the desert to reflect and think what is God's call for him. And then we see the effects of being meditating, connected with God, and finding out what is your purpose in this life and how God wants you to fulfill that purpose. He goes out to Galilee and starts proclaiming that God is here, and that's a time for change, a time for conversion. And there's no other time. And we heard, this is the right time. There's no more waiting. And God is not waiting anymore. And in the midst of this pandemia and this craziness that we're going through socially, I can tell you there's no more waiting time. You have to kind of seek in your hearts, what are the Isaac that you do not want to offer to God? We all have Isaacs in our hearts and in our minds and in our homes. What is your Isaac that you're upholding from God and you're not willing to give it away? Even if you know that God will return it to you. But God wants to see how faithful you are. Just coming to Mass and doing your devotions, I don't think is enough for a true father or Christ to go by. And there will be no glory and resurrection if you do not pick up your cross and follow the Lord. Let us stand as church, the body of Christ. Let's open our minds and our consciousness that comes from our baptism to truly embrace what we believe and what God is calling us for. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men in our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For us sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the death, and his kingdom will not end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adoring and glorified, has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please repeat after me, this is our faith. This is the faith of the church that we are proud to profess in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. With confidence, let us trust our loving Father with our needs and petitions. That the church will stand before the world without stain or blemish, holy and obedient to God's word. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> For the world, the transfiguration of Jesus Christ may make us aware of the presence of the glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for those who are downhearted, who are burdened with difficulties due to COVID, that they may experience the transfiguring power of God. Let us pray to the Lord. That our elect may experience their lives being transformed by God's loving graciousness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For our community, that we may find it wonderful to worship in the company of the saints of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our For the homebound, the sick, Paul. Fernando Martinez, Jose Perez Ruiz, Dennis Sterling, Bertie Mogus, Pablo Espino, Hector Venegas Sarate, and for their caregivers. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faithful departed, Valeriano Canseco, Alfonso Mendez, May they rest forever in the eternal peace of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. This Mass is being offered for the special intention of Yolanda Garcia. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For those intentions we carry in the quiet of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, who did not spare your own son, but hand it over to us that we may be safe. We trust that you will always give us what we need. Keep us in truth with you. And we trust our prayers in your heart. We ask you this to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. During the preparation of the gifts, please join in singing, Transfigure Us, O Lord.
offerings be acceptable to your goodness and set us free from our worldly attractions that we may deserve your grace and live your heavenly mysteries through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just that we should give you thanks most holy Father of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ our Lord. For after he, he had told the disciples of his coming death on the holy mountain, he manifested to them his glory to show even by testimony of law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of resurrection. And so with the angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we are clean. <coughs> He gathered with his disciples and was going to give his life to set us free. He took bread, gave you thanks and praise, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take this, all of you. 
and eat of it. For this is my body that will be given up for you. When the supper had ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. Took the cup and gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. We pray for you for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Brothers and sisters, the mystery of our faith. memorial your son's death and resurrection we offer you father this bread of life and your chalice of eternal blessing and we thank you for kindness worthy to send your presence and minister to you we humbly pray that our, our partaking of the body and blood of your son that we may always be gathered into one by the holy spirit father in heaven make your church an eternal offering to you so that we that we may be able to obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mother of God, the apostles, the saints, the glorious martyrs. And may these sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation to all the world. Be pleased to confirm us in faith and charity with your pilgrim church, your servant, Francis, our Pope, Robert, our bishop, and your entire people who you have gathered here and made your own. Father in heaven, listen to the prayers of your family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather us to yourself, all your children scattered throughout the world. Father, we pray for our departed brothers and sisters and to all those that are pleasing to you, other passing from this life, give them admittance to your kingdom. Let us take a few seconds to pray for all our loved ones who have departed, especially those who have died due to this pandemic. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory to Christ our Lord through whom you have bestowed everything that is in the world and that is good through him with him in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours our mighty Father forever and ever As we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the us from evil. And lead us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in a day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours for now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And with, and with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us give each other some paternal peace. Sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> I went overboard. <laughs> peace to all of you. Love you lots. I got over it.
excited. <laughs> <laughs> Let us join our brothers and sisters who are watching us online with a spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already here and unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. As we have received the glorious mysteries, O Lord, make our thanksgiving acceptable to you and for allowing us, while we are still on earth, to be partakers even now on the things of heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, uh, I want to thank you for accommodating. We needed to move fast into our sanctuary uh, we had a, a problem throughout the week, and last Sunday where our neighbors complained to the city of Vista that we were blocking Vista uh, Valencia Drive, and they couldn't get to their homes. We requested to cease the traffic and the flow of cars from the church to let the residents go into their homes. So it was very important for me for us to get here because we need we need the parking and there's a lot of cars coming in and going, especially for this mass, the 11 o'clock and the one o'clock mass. And like the gospel says that if your neighbor asks you to give him the cloak, give him your whole clothes, right? 
and you never ask you to walk one mile, we walk five miles, right? So I wanted to let our neighbors know that we can walk even 100 miles if we are requested Amen. to not disturb their hearts and give them good witness of faith. And our brothers yesterday were so wonderful to work from 8 to 3.45 in helping me get everything set up for you. So this is church. This is St. Francis. And I'm very happy that you were able to accommodate and come here because I told you last weekend that we were going to have the Mass over there in the parking lot. Thank you for being such a beautiful church. I truly pray that God may change our ways and our hearts, that we may rise in this Easter as a new creation in Christ, a church that shines bright, full of the Holy Spirit, okay? May you have a blessed weekend. We're going to be having our Sunday Masses, our Holy Week and everything here. Our funerals, we're going to have them here too. Praise God. And we just want to have in a church at 7 a.m. Mass on Sundays and the 8 o'clock Mass in the morning. All Masses will be here in our outdoor sanctuary, okay? May God bless you abundantly and may the joy of God throughout this Linden be in your hearts. May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you and protect you always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thank you, God. Please join in singing during. <laughs> during communion and sending forth, please join in singing The Lord is My Light. Uh-huh.